Good morning. My name's Heidi, also known as the Transcultural Nurse, and welcome back to my channel. I'm here again on another sunny, lovely day at my allotment plot. So today I've come down. I've got a few jobs to do from last time when me and Louie planted onions and strawberries. Um, we've got the usual hoeing to do. I've got a couple of raspberry plants I want to plant in which were given to me off one of the mums at school. Apparently these are white raspberries which I've never even seen or heard of so I look forward to when they start um, producing a crop. So I'm going to attempt to no dig bed today next to my onions and garlic i'm gonna extend that a little bit because there's plastic like a plastic membrane underneath so i'm going to remove that see what the state of the soil's like maybe remove any weeds that are at the surface and then i'm going to do a bit of an old dig bed and plant some radishes and i think i've just brought radish and possibly some onions but we'll see so i'm just going to have a quick cup of tea and then we'll get to it Right, time to get on with it. It's a little bit windy today. Just mindful that I brought some seeds down and they've sort of blown across my plot. Um, so yeah, I'm going to extend this onion and garlic bed out. I'm going to possibly put a pathway in between just so that I can get, well, part way through without treading on all my crops. Also for the kids, well, for Louis particularly. So he's got a pathway to run through and he can help me. So this is what I'm going to do. So there's my onion and garlic bed. And what I have decided to do, as mentioned, is extend that out. So I'm going to take up whatever is underneath this, which I think it's like a, a vinyl membrane or something, which is obviously being put down to stop the, the grass and weeds coming up. But if I hadn't have sort of like accidentally moved the wood chip, I wouldn't have realised it was there. So I'm going to crack on. and salvage some of this wood chip and use it for the paths. Oh, millipede. Right, let's get the wheelbarrow. that I think that's bindweed because they're usually really long and wiry and really pervasive so you need to get rid of that otherwise it'll end up taking over your plot Louis when you need him. <laughs> Do you know what? I'll show you this vinyl. I've got a feeling it extends under my onions, which isn't a problem because they're not deep rooting. They're not deep rooting vegetables, garlic and onions. But nevertheless, I didn't really want it underneath my uh, my veg. But hey, oh, I'm not going to dig it all up now. I think what I'll do, I'll keep the wood chip down part in part where to make a path because it would just makes sense to keep it down. I'm going to cut it. Now, I haven't come very well prepared. I've got a knife. It's not a, like a Stanley or anything. Uh, although I do have one at home. I might bring it if this doesn't go through. I've got a Mora knife, which it was pretty sharp when I bought it, but it is pretty, it's not. It's pretty blunt at the minute. So, but we'll have a go because that's all I've got and see if I can get through this final. Oh yeah, it's going in. Oh god. <laughs> Luckily, don't cut your fingers off. Right, so I've cut from about there. I'll have to cut a bit further up actually, just where that grass is to meet the 
to meet the other end of the onion bed so it's level but I've cut about a metre and it actually ends there anyway so I'll save all this oh there's all tape he has he's been whoever's been he's been lazy he's not took the tape off the cardboard that he's done if ever you use cardboard you need to be taking the cellar tape off otherwise you're just going to be left with a load of um, a load of plastic pollution and it's not good for your plants so take it off right so we've got a new zealand flatworm on the plot well there's two there can you see when i first got this plot about five five well five and a half years ago now it was full of them and apparently these are not native to the uk hence why they're called new zealand flatworm but they will literally eat the earthworms um which are obviously needed to keep healthy soil so I know it's a bit inhumane, but you've got to kill them, and it does pain me to do it. But what I did last time was put them in some vinegar and water, and it just got rid of them because I don't know. Like if you you hit them, I don't know whether they're like earthworms where you can cut them into slices and they'll grow back. But yeah, if you notice any little black round marble type things in your soil, there's a good chance that it could be the New Zealand flatworm. They are horrible. But they need to go unfortunately oh, do you know what it is it's it was one long one it looked like two i've took it out and i i've just put it out for the birds i i don't i felt bad for killing it so hopefully i mean there's a magpie up there i'm hoping a magpie or something will swoop down and get it but apparently frogs and newts and stuff like them so the more wildlife you can encourage, if you do have them, it might keep them at bay or even hedgehogs and stuff. But otherwise, they will do damage. And um, yeah, we need our worms, so get rid. So are we ready for the grand unveiling? Ready. Let's do it. See what's underneath. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So can you see all these? This looks like cooch grass which is just basically long grass but uh, look at the roots they are extremely long and they will go on and on and on <laughs> but the good thing is that i can just lift these off can't i i could just put cardboard down and be lazy but they'll just grow straight through it so other than oh, a little bit of you know graft because it's not easy getting this up, but it does lift off quite easily if you get it all in one bit just get rid of it you can dry it'll dry off and compost um but it needs to go because this is like another pervasive weed which will just keep coming back and coming back and coming back but apparently with no dick if it does shoot through you can just literally lift the weeds lift the roots off the top but we'll get rid of these anyway now i'm thinking that'll do um i've got rid of most although there's one most of these roots absolutely loads chock-a-block but considering the rest of it's like that wasn't too bad actually so i've got a nice clean slate to work with and i'm just going to cover it up now with some cardboard right so i'm going to put some cardboard down i'm just going to use a, a, literally a big sheet of cardboard and i'm going to double it over so as you can see i've got a large cardboard box and I've just literally flattened it and I've taken all the cellar tape off. So I'm gonna basically what Charles Dowding says, who's the master of no dig, is try and get your slits lined up because when you layer it and if it's got slits in, if you don't overlap the cardboard then you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, weeds and stuff that you don't want popping through once they reach the light. So I've got a couple of layers to put down and then I'll start putting me uh, compost on. Strawberry on my lips and your fingertips. There we go, so I've put about three, three layers on and I think that'll do. Right, so this is what I've lifted off there. It's all wood chip and it is it's quite full of worms actually. Um which you know, which it would because it's just wood and they are doing the job, but because it was on plastic, I'm surprised to see so many. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save a little bit for the, the paths, but I'm going to actually put a layer on over the top of the cardboard. five minutes breather oh god back's killing this morning but it's all good needs to be done because this before long it's going to be what june july and i feel like i need to hurry up and get stuff in um so today if i get these seeds sown i'll be i'll be happy right next up is my compost layer obviously that's composting down there the wood chip but i'm actually going to put an additional layer now this is a mixture of soil and compost as you can see there's loads of little seedlings coming up but that's fine just get rid of them what i'm going to do i'm going to get me sieve and i'm going to sieve a layer on top of the wood chip and then i did bring some compost from a compost tub at home and i'm going to add that as well it's a good workout for your arms literally Feel the burn already. You just keep going until you fill it up with compost. So I literally sieve and sieve until I can't sieve anymore. Literally, I mean, I could technically I could just add that to what I've already done, but there would have been no point in sieving. See that plastic? Because you know, most of this will compost down, but I've already added a bit a base layer of wood chip, which is composting nicely because it's just full of worms. So what I'll do with this, because it's dry and because it's still going to take a while, there's big wood chips in there. I'm going to just add it to my, my existing compost bay and let that compost down even more. And then hopefully this time next year, I'll have even more lovely compost. Right, give that a little rake, try and even it out a bit. Right, and then you just need to heal it in. Heal it in, make it stable for when you put your, your seeds in. It's warm today. Oh God, I'm gonna be in so much pain later. My hips and back aren't what they used to be. I'm knocking on a bit. Right, so I'm gonna show you the compost which I brought out my um, black compost tub at home, the one which was full of leaves and stuff. Can you see? Yeah, it's just full of leaves and eggshells and oh god, all sorts of stuff from the house. But I'm not going to dig, dig my hand in because I've got no gloves on. But I'm just going to layer it on top, give it, you know, because this is full of nutrients and stuff, so hopefully it'll give them a good start. Then I'm going to get on with my uh, sewing. Just full of worms, full of them red worms. Get that plastic out of there. I've got loads of eggshells in here, and maybe they'll even stop the uh, slugs and snails. Who knows? There we go. I think that'll do. I maybe should have put that underneath, but do you know what? I don't think it matters all that much. We'll find out in a minute when I try and sow my seeds and all the in all the stickiness. But there's plenty of worms in there, which is a good sign. Look, oh, there's worms everywhere. Because I've still got some onions from the other day, which I didn't plant, and I didn't actually take them home. I'm going to put some in here. Then I'm going to do a row of spring onions and then a row of radishes, maybe two. So I've planted my onions in, they're a bit floppy but they'll be alright, give them a bit of water and that and they'll be, they'll be fine, I just didn't want to waste them and I say I'd take them home, I probably wouldn't have put them in a pot but I think they'll do better here, so that's that, I think I've planted about 10, I'm not that OCD about my rows and stuff, so they can go in alongside, so I've got some red rabbit, red radish, scarlet globe, I've also got some purple ones which I've never seen before, Viola, exceptional colour and flavour. 
and I've got some spring onions um, I think these are from last year but I'm gonna try and store them anyway so I'll do a couple of rows of spring onions I will do and maybe a row of radishes spring onions right half an inch in depth and in, in rows of 12 inches 30 centimeters apart them over now for the radishes so we're doing them ones right I think I'll do for today on the seed front and just cover this up So there you have it, a little no dig bed. Probably not technically perfect, I'm sure there's probably more <laughs> better ways of doing it, but I think I've done an all right job there, you know. And uh, they're getting a good chance with all that nice organic matter. So, you know, give it a couple of weeks and we'll report back and see how they're doing. But for now, I think it's a cup of tea time. Oh, look, my New Zealand flatworms shriveled up. It's literally shriveled up and died. Um, sorry, I like really damp and wet conditions. And under that, under that um, tarpaulin vinyl sheet thing is where they hide. So I'm just having a, a rest because I'm absolutely baking and I'm a little bit tired. So I'll just have a quick cup of tea. Can't tell you how much I enjoy this, you know, it's just so therapeutic. Even though it is hard and it's hard juggling you know the kids and stuff but I've literally just come straight after the school run well I nipped to home base to get a couple of things um we'll just come straight here and it's so beautiful and peaceful you know what what more could I ask for doing this I'm outside I'm in nature I'm in peace and quiet I'm learning a lot because although I've been doing it for a few years I still don't know I'm still learning I'm still a novice but it's just amazing. I think food is so important. You know, and the less we have to rely on supermarkets and sourcing fruit and stuff from goodness knows where, you know, the, the better it is really for us in the long term and our kids. And I really want to teach my children how to grow their own and forage and look after themselves because the world's a bit crazy at the minute. And in 10, 15 years, 20 years, who knows where we're going to be. So basics are so important. Anyway, finish my cup of tea and I think I will plant my little raspberries and plant my artichoke. Back at it then. So I've just planted my little raspberries. I think they were just cuttings or possibly just new shoots that had come up because they often do um, come up with the raspberry cane. So this lady's kindly gifted me a couple and I'll be really, really looking forward to seeing what they're like. So I've got some Jerusalem artichokes and I was giving them as well and now they come in like little, I think they're called tubers. These have really, really dried up because they've been in my garden shed for days. I don't even know if they're going to, I don't know if they're dead, but I'm going to try. Oh, I feel sorry for them. Why did I leave them like that for? Find a space for these somewhere. So there, so I've planted them in there. So I think we'll call it a day for today. I think I've done quite a lot today again. I always come away thinking, yeah, I think I've done all right. You know, I don't always get to spend as much time here as I want to, but it doesn't matter as long as you get some done. And you get some enjoyment, that's the main thing, isn't it? So all I'm going to say for now is, I hope you like the video. Please give me a like, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. It'd be nice to get a little bit of support behind my channel. And um, we'll see you again next time. Bye for now.